Wasn't niggas doing nose rings. It wasn't niggas doing photo shoots like he was doing. Wasn't niggas wearing Versace vests and shit on the cover of New York Times. Speaking of business, I just want to kind of use this. Did you think Pac have an exit strategy as a businessman? And, and what was that? Because, you know, they say you build your businesses up and then you, you're supposed to have an exit strategy to kind of like move on. Mm -hmm. Did he ever express like what his exit strategy was when it came down to his rap career and, and overall of who he was um, to the culture? Um, I believe, you know, um, Pac absolutely had an exit strategy. Now, to what it actually was, I'm not going to speak on that um, on camera because some of that stuff, you know, his his family and, and his estate is still working on. But he absolutely had a had an exit strategy. And, um, you know, a lot of it would have definitely involved, you know, movie movies, acting, yeah. both in front and behind. There's a the debate camera. of, um, and I'm going to, it's a little hot, a hot seat question. But this debate was, is Pop, was he a better actor or a better rapper? That's in crazy. Conversation. Yeah. Any comment on that one? Me personally, yeah. I felt like he eventually would have would have been a way better actor than a rapper. He would have eclipsed the rap shit. You know what I mean? And to where at this point now, had he lived, people would be like, yo, you remember Pac used to be a rapper? Mm. Yeah. Kind of one of those transitions. Yeah. Like on some... I mean, Mark Wahlberg is a terrible comparison, but yeah, but I mean, you know what I mean. You yeah. don't think about his rap career as yeah. much as you think about his acting career now. Hundred percent. You know, um, when I think about Pac, you know, he's considered much more than just like a rap artist. Mm -hmm. He's one of my favorites as well, mm -hmm. but more so the man. That's that's who I'm more so inspired by. We got Nipsey Hussle. That's another one. Mm -hmm. We got Malcolm X. Like men in history that gave her people some type of sense of leadership. Um, you know, they did a Netflix documentary on who killed Malcolm X. Have you seen that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you come, I mean, this is to kind of get to it. Like, who do you think is responsible for uh, Pac not being with us anymore? That's something I'm not going to talk about on camera. You know what I mean? I'm never going to talk about that on camera. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess like, not to, I'm not needling in that, but more so expressing that, you know, it's unfortunate when we do see that, you know, when we do see like our greats and it just, I think it sometimes scares us off from being the the lions that we are at times. Now, as far as, um, um, just to touch a little bit more in the, in the, in the Pac world, there was a cover he did um, when he was dripping gold mm -hmm. in the tub. Were you around that time? Mm -hmm. How did he... Did y'all have a conversation about it before or was there any comment after? And how do you think Pac was able to get away with that? Being who he was as a rap artist, like did he ever have to like defend his sexuality that people didn't really, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that test it cause he would do different things. I heard Mariah Carey bought that, bought one of those pictures. Famous photographer did that photo shoot. I think his name was Dave LaChapelle, something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, he did that photo shoot, she bought like a big ass wall size. This is, this is when it, during, like in previous years or like when it dropped? Like This was, you know, years after he had passed away. You know what I'm saying? It, I heard it was up in a crib. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, it's a funny, that day when he was doing the photo shoot, we was we was all there, you know what I mean? Okay. It was at a hotel. I think they did that at the, the Chateau, the Chateau, what is it? Chateau Mama or something like that on, on Sunset. Okay. That famous hotel with, uh, John Belushi died, they did it in there. And we clowned. We had a ball, you know, that's how that's how our relationship was. We clowned, you know what I mean? And what was it? What were y'all saying? Like, man, what the hell is going on here? You know, <laughs> like, you know. What the hell is going on here right now? You know what I'm saying? And it was a uh, um, it was different photos. Yeah. He also did another photo shoot where he drove way out to like a farm and it was like a reenactment of, you know, him as a slave with some small children. All these pictures are available on the internet. Yeah. And um, so it was a series of photo shoots that I forgot for what magazine. But what it did was it, it, um, it taught us you can't be afraid, you know, to be um, mm -hmm. daring and not, uh, not box yourself in to one lane. Because at that time, us being young, 
you know, kids right. from the block. We had no exposure to what high fashion was and what, you know, a, a actual photo shoot was when you coming up with different scenarios. We had, had no exposure to that. We didn't know what the fuck was going on. So that's why we was basically like it was. And that was another, you know, chance for him to teach. You know what I mean? And so we just got a chance to learn that you could be brave and you could do you as a man and still be masculine, you know what I mean? For those who wanna, you know, maybe question his sexuality. I mean, like, I've never heard that. I think before. it was like nose rings. I've, I've heard little stuff, yeah, but, it, yeah. but it happens in the territory of a black man ascending and when you are doing different yeah. things. Yeah, and you know, Pac was one on one, you know what I mean? He was a nigga that could wear a nose ring, but still you was, you, you was going to think about it before you ran up. Was that revolutionary back then to have a nose ring? Because I wasn't of that particular generation. But were guys wearing nose <laughs> ring or was it like when he came out with it, where y'all like, OK, what's, what's going on? Again, like I said, Pac was one on one. So everything he did was revolutionary from the tattoos to his interviews, the way he did his interviews to the shit he talked about on record. It wasn't no rappers talking about Brendan's got a baby. Right. It wasn't no rappers talking about keep your head up. You know right. what I'm saying? He had contemporaries that were all great. Right. But it, he was one on one. Completely a lane of his own. Wasn't niggas doing tattoos. It wasn't niggas doing that. Wasn't niggas doing nose rings. It wasn't niggas doing photo shoots like he was doing. Wasn't niggas wearing Versace vests and shit on the cover of New York Times. It was no other rappers doing that. Mm. All them niggas that started doing that shit came after Pac and he opened the door for him like, look, this is what you could do and still be a man. You could do this and still be a man, you right. know what I mean? I was thinking about our conversation about social media, and I was thinking about just in losing Pac in the fashion that we did, how people bring out their cell phones and their camera phones. And it made me think, I wonder like how much that would have shifted um, people having some, I guess, some more evidence about people that were involved because I could see people taking out their phones. Do you think mm -hmm. that would have like changed some things if social media was around? Like Instagram and shit, man. Who knows, man? Who knows? It wasn't. We ain't had it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we had what we had, and um, who knows? Yeah. Have you ever like honestly like reflected on like Pac overshadowing your own career, even in his passing? Like, does it bother you that that that's what people want to talk about and? How do you deal with that? Man, I'm too busy, um, especially at this point in my life, I'm too busy living in so much gratitude mm. that I don't have any time or any energy to wonder what if.